Oh, shoot. Oh, hey. Hi. Come on in. All righty. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, Priya? A little toasty. A little toasty. It's a hot one out there. It's, it's a squatch out there. <laughs> my name is Priya Krishna. I'm a food writer and the author of the cookbook Indianish, and we are in my apartment in Brooklyn. Oh, this convenient one right here. I live in New York City, and I'm sure as you know, the apartments here are small, so it can make doing what I do, which is a lot of cooking, really tough, but another part of my job is going out to eat at restaurants. New York City has so many restaurants per capita. I mean, the kitchens being small is not ideal, but I have to say the New York City subway like allows me to do my job in the best way possible. Like I love that for 275, I can go from here to Sunset Park or here to the Bronx. I have a roommate, his name is Seth. He loves to bake. I hated Instagram until I started documenting Seth baking. And I just, I just find it personally very amusing. He like hates everything he bakes. So I just like love the endless, watching the endless frustration. Is that a set bake right there? Oh yeah, he made donuts this morning. Yeah, these ones are usually pretty good. Although I'm sure he hated them. Yeah, it was really good. What do you want to see first? I think we should start in the fridge. That seems okay. like a good natural. Okay. Question. This is probably like the most beloved real estate. I The first day that I moved to New York, I went to Book of Mormon and I won the lottery. And I was like, oh my God, New York is gonna be amazing. You can just like win Broadway lotteries. I also got a cronut my first day in New York. It was a big day for me. Our fridge is messy. The things that you'll always find in our fridge are yogurt. I probably go to go through like two to three tubs a day. You go for two to three Oh, sorry, a week, a week. I meant a week. <laughs> we have a lot of butter, peanut butter and jam. You refrigerate your peanut butter. Yeah, because that's what my mom did. I don't know. Like, should I not? Should I stop? I'm one of those people who like, whatever my mom did growing up, I just assume as fact and I don't question it. I like decided I was gonna get into pickling. And so, oh, oops, I made these like onions pickled in vinegar and turmeric and peppercorns and bay leaf and they're actually, they get better. Oh, the other thing that was really cool about being on book tour is random like Indian aunties came and gifted me stuff. So someone gave me this like mango achar. These are like all of Seth's condiments. Do not buy bottled lime juice. What's been in here the longest? There's a really old sandwich in here that I'm afraid to throw away because I feel like I'll get yelled at, but it has literally been in here for a month. Now. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Whose ham sandwich is this? Ew. Oh no, it's molded. I well, I should probably throw it away then. <laughs> it's got a freezer burnt on it. Then. I'm just gonna, while we're debating this, I'm just gonna throw away this moldy sandwich. <laughs> oh. I mean, I'm not trying to like yuck your yum or anything, but that was <laughs> no. It disgusting. wasn't my. It wasn't my sandwich. <laughs> Honestly, maybe we should just clean out my fridge right now. Marie Kondo would really have a field day. I don't even know what this stuff is. I feel like this is really demystifying. Like, you think that cookbook authors have like cool, fancy, organized kitchens? Well, we don't. But I rely a lot on frozen vegetables. We have so many frozen vegetables in here. My roommate bakes bread. So we always have bread of some sort. That's usually breakfast. Girl Scout cookies, of course. This is snack. Um, yeah. Uh, you just want something like savory? Snack, you know? Okay. Maybe like a mascarpone, olive oil, salt, and pepper situation. Does that sound good? If someone comes over last minute, it's like whatever I have on toast. So you and your mom, you, you cook with her a lot probably, right? A lot, Who's yeah. Who's cook? I mean, my mom, obviously. Like, that's not even a question. So that's her saying you can cook it. Oh! That's her. It's like a Indianified Rosie the Riveter. When I was growing up, like, the most basic snack was, we called it toast with namak kali merch. Namak means salt in Hindi, kali merch means pepper. And just like salt and pepper, everything was what I grew up on. You can give Seth's bread your your honest critique. He probably hates it, so it's fine. <laughs> Toast. Toast. And like, what is everyone else whipping up? Are people just like pulling like bouillabaisse out of their butt on these videos? Like, no. Tell Seth I give his bread a 10. Oh, 10. amazing. Yeah. There's his sourdough starters right there. Oh, well, speaking of, can we like 
take a peek around at how you organize? Yeah, <laughs> organization is a, it's a loose word in this apartment. These are all of Seth's spices. Your speculose spice mix, because yes. everyone's using that on a regular oh my basis. God, this is incredible. <laughs> the only thing that I have here is my my heen, my asfetida. It smells pretty intense. This is like what makes Indian food taste Indian. It's like the Indian version of MSG, right? Totally. I could not live without my heen. I don't like to keep it in like enclosed spaces because I'm just worried the smell will like overtake the whole cabinet. Can we look and see what your spices are looking like? Let's talk about this for a second. You've probably noticed that these top two are like extremely organized. Everything is very as it should be. And these, this is, this is my comfort zone here. You know, and it totally, it works for me. I'm completely fine with my mess. So when I moved to New York, my mom basically like took all a bunch of spices from her cabinet and put them in these Tupperware containers and labeled them in both Hindi and English. One thing my mom taught me that I think is just genius is to store spices in old pill containers because they have like the child lock. This is our adjoin. Here's turmeric. This is our secret family spice. It's called atom masala. It kind of just tastes like a like funkier, spicier version of chaat masala. But this has been in our family for like 100 years. And only like one person knows how to make it. This was made in India and shipped over to me. What is the spice you probably use the most? This, my chaat masala. Either MTR, that's my other favorite brand, or Budsha chaat masala, I use all the time. You can smell that. What would you say are your like top five Entry essentials. Garlic, chaat masala, my turmeric, cumin seeds. You're about to see how well organized my kitchen is. Pink masoor dal, it cooks really fast. This is my fancy organizational system, which is medicine bottles, quart containers, and Ziploc bags. Ooh, this is the other thing that I, like, actually, I should have just made you this as a snack because this really is my go-to snack. These are idlis. Idlis are rice cakes from South India, and I never don't have rice idli mix. That is an idli maker I bought for like $1 in Delhi. Idlis are usually the kind of thing you sort of spend a lot of time making, you steam them, it requires a lot of active effort but I just mix that mix with like water. Put it in the Italy maker, you put it in the microwave for one minute and magically fluffy Italy's come out. I want that. <laughs> that sounds so Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to make it? It takes literally one minute. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Do you need me to reach this? Oh, can you? My mo most used kitchen appliance is my microwave. I love microwaves. I know there are people who are like very snooty about microwaves, like we don't use microwaves. I think everyone should be using their microwave more. I really got this down to a science. You're gonna be like, how does it cook Italy's in 50 seconds? You're about to see. <laughs> While this is microwaving, we have 24 seconds to make chutney. I'll mix this chutney powder with olive oil and that is literally how you make chutney. Our Italy's are done. So you open this and then they just pop right out. Like, I'm telling you, this is like a magical device. Oh. It's like divine. <laughs> you could drizzle that on top of hot garbage and it would taste very good. Yeah. That's a great snack. Made up for the moldy sandwich we found in the fridge. <laughs> All right, Bea, let's talk about the uh, methodology behind how you decided where things go. I wish there was like more of a rhyme or reason. Like here are the things I kind of reach for a lot. Like knives, silverware, cutting boards I put over there. It's funny, that cutting board is like, that's from my parents' kitchen that they bought when they immigrated to this country like in 1980. A lot of this stuff is like that. Like these, these are the other most used item in my kitchen. Or these are called katoris. They're these stainless steel bowls. You can buy them for like 50 cents at an Indian grocery store. I think these like came with my parents from India. Like a perfect single scoop of ice cream fits in here. I just love, I love small kitchen appliances. Like this is great because I make a lot of chonk, which is tempered spices. It's like when you just heat up some oil or ghee, you add spices, toast them, and then you pour, I usually pour it on top of dal. It's, it's just perfect. Like who doesn't want like a little small pot? And I'm left-handed and a lot of them are built for right-handed people. But for some reason, the grooves in this Turkish coffee warmer are lefty friendly. If you were to be a kitchen tool, what would you be? 
my garlic press. I know it's a really controversial one, but I love garlic presses. Hot take 2019. I know. What? I just love it. Like it does one roll and it does it really well. I'd like to think that that's hopefully what I seek to do. Like most of my kitchen organization is like not, not great. I feel like it's hard to have skeletons in your closet when all of your closets are filled with skeletons. Yeah, I'm not, not super proud of this cabinet. We just have far too many measuring utensils, like all the teaspoons you could want. Cup measures, another set of cup measures, yet another set of cup measures, more teaspoons, frosting nozzles for, you know, when you wanna casually frost a cake. <laughs> I use my blender and my Instant Pot, but of course the stand mixer gets prime real estate because, you know, it's the stand mixer. I'm not allowed to use the stand mixer. A fun fact is that this toaster oven did not fit in this kitchen. And so <laughs> I literally took a saw and shaved it down <laughs> to fit what? soda stream. Would I have bought this if it hadn't been free? Maybe not. I mean, it does feel kind of luxurious. I love collecting like little novelty cups. This one's from the US Open in 2013. Like I'm totally the person who will spend like $12 on a beer at the Broadway show to get the cup that comes with it. This is where we keep all of our Tupperware. My family used to live in the Philippines and my mother found these like very fun Tupperware all the way from Manila. This is probably my favorite storage item. And it just reminds me of living in, in Manila, which is awesome. I love these. Again, my mom got them for me. Like any item in my kitchen that's nice, usually my mom is connected to it somehow. I love quarter sheet pans. Again, this is like the theme of small kitchen items. I do a lot of cooking for one. So these things are very helpful. What is your least favorite part of your kitchen? Oh, so many things. <laughs> I don't like the lack of counter space, although like we've made up for it with this kitchen island. I used to hate the fact that like the living room and the kitchen were one and the same, but now it's kind of nice for entertaining. Like people are sitting on the couch and you can be like cooking or chopping or prepping and people are hanging out, playing the piano. I can play a thousand miles on the piano. So Vanessa Carlton song. Amazing. Making my way downtown. <laughs> We're like all shut. <laughs> 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 <Just happened. laughs> Meanwhile, the roommate is literally playing like Chopin. Thank you so much for coming to my kitchen. Uh, I think I'm gonna go eat some more Italy's. Bye. <laughs> I'll come back for some more. Italy's yeah, stuff. please was... come back. One minute or less. <laughs> <sighs> This is funny. It feels funny. 